Hello folks, welcome. My name is Alex Singleton, CEO, CTO, and founder of Bucephalus Dev, and welcome to my interim stable uh, as I figure out how to exactly scale my operation beyond the confines of my basement. So anyway, without further ado, let's kind of go ahead and get started here. What I'm gonna do is show you how to build your own uh, six to eight Badger, as I like to call them, GPU miner rig. Um, that will be able to mine Ethereum and it'll be able to yield, one rig will be able to yield uh, 0.2 Ethereum every 14 days roughly, depending on your build, um, which um, that's 0.2 Ethereum at about 550 right now, um, operating at 10 cents a kilowatt hour for 24 seven, will probably break even in about six months. That's the sort of rough and tough economics on this. Um, and you've got, I've got eight GPUs down here eight by eight, so that's 64 GPUs over here. You can see one of them right over here. Collectively, they're generating about uh, six decibels of sound. And on top of that, each GPU is emanating about, I think it's 140 degrees is where I actually uh, measured the temperature last. It's 85 degrees down here in my basement. AC is on 55 degrees outside here in Leawood, Kansas. So uh, as you can imagine, if you're gonna build more than one of these, just know what you're getting into and know when you'll break even. Again, a two to $3,000 build right now at current spot at the current Ethereum mining condition or parameters, the most profitable thing to mine is Ethereum right now. Uh, and that'll be about six months, assuming that it trades the current spot and that Casper isn't dropped, which is basically the sort of mining um, uh, parameters or conditions that make the uh, mining possible. I'm not, I don't wanna get too detailed or too uh, into the uh, mechanics of how everything works in cryptocurrency because I just want to I want everyone to know if you're a stay-at-home mom or even a, just a hollow that knows what's up you don't need to be a programmer or a software engineer like myself to get involved in mining so started, I'm gonna start with the unboxing first we'll start with the unboxing what will be um, displayed on a gist in Amazon wish list or list if you want to call it. also be displayed in my blog the parts you'll need but after that, uh, we're gonna go ahead and unbox, and then I'm gonna go ahead and set it up with y'all, and we're gonna jump on my screen, and we'll go over for the rest of the tutorial how to set up a, a crypto wallet, uh, like a Trezor, and then we'll go ahead and get started mining. It'll probably be about a 90 minute tutorial, and you'll probably need about a day out of your weekend to get this done. So let's go ahead and get started. This is a crypto case you can buy on Amazon, about $180. Uh, and it's just a piece of metal, but it's conditioned for this environment. As I said before, uh, one rig will probably generate about um, 140 degrees for one GPU, and the ambient temperature gets to about 85 to 90 degrees um, when you measure the uh, temperature with a, therm uh, a uh, thermostat like this. So anyway, um, you'll want to get one that's like this that I recommend. $180 going from there. The next important piece is the GPU. This is a RX 580, 8 gigabyte uh, AMD uh, GPU. Uh, these are probably one of the best GPUs out there. They're not the prettiest ones in the room, but they get the job done. And it's uh, an RX 580, 8 gigabyte, will probably generate this one, um, I think it was a Hynix model or um, Samsung, will generate about 28 megahertz a second right out of the box um, without strapping the cards or overclocking them. Uh, and that's pretty good out of the box. Uh, and again, you want to you want to make sure that you optimize or overclock your cars to kind of get the best burn rate possible. Um, so anyway, stick with the AMD RX 580 cards. I'll put a selection of them down. My personal favorites are the Sapphire Nitros. Uh, out of the box, they're about 29 megahertz a second, uh, and that's great for running on EthOS, which we're going to go configure the first build for, and then Windows after that. But anyway, uh, yeah, totally. I'd recommend RX 580 cards. Um, and going with those first. So there are six of them for this build, six for the six. So let's go ahead and put these down. Okay, the next important part, um, well the next one I would say is the power supply. Let's go ahead and start with that. This is a 1300 power supply or PSU. Uh, if you're gonna do eight, you're gonna need two 1000 G3s, or if you're gonna do one, all you need, one for six um, GPUs, you'll need a 1300 G2. Um, these are great. My personal favorite is the EVGA brand. I've been the most successful with these uh, out of the box, and also uh, Cooler Master. Again, I'll put the parts in the parts list, but this is the one 
uh, you will need this for a six um, a six GPU minor rig that we're going to put together. Again, I don't want to go too far into you know gold level and gold standards because again, I want to make sure that everyone can do this sort of mining right in the confines of your own home or wherever else. So let's go ahead and put this aside. Next is the processor that will go with the motherboard. It's just a regular Pentium processor um, that will um, go on with the motherboard here. This is a ASRock H110 Pro BTC motherboard. Um, and this is a, um, a heat sink gel that will, I guess, help uh, insulate the uh, Pentium chip from the motherboard. Um, this is about $60. Motherboard will be about $150 to $200. I highly recommend this first one. This was my first board that I got started with. Uh, again, $150 to $200 to buy on Amazon. We'll go through that. The motherboard. These are a set of PCIe um, connection uh, ports from your GPU that'll connect to your motherboard. Uh, they'll be about $50 for a set of six on Amazon. Grab these, available on the gist that I'll put up. This is a DDR4 8 gigabyte RAM stick. One is only necessary for this. Uh, I recommend getting two if you can afford it, if it's in your budget, uh, but one will only be required for this build. These are the PCIe. These that I said we were gonna get. So, uh, Next is a hard drive, Kingston SSD hard drive, 120 gigabytes. Uh, runs about $60, I believe. If you wanna run uh, a node or a full node with Bitcoin, which we'll go down in a second tutorial if I um, try to do this right um, after this, um, you'll wanna get a 250 gigabyte uh, Samsung uh, because the blockchain of Bitcoin is about 163 gigabytes. Uh, for the intents and purposes of this, of this tutorial, you only need a 120 gigabyte hard drive. But if you wanna again, level up with me on the second part of this tutorial, which will be for Bitcoin, uh, setting up your own full node with Bitcoin, That'll be, I think it's about 160 or 150 for a Samsung uh, 250 gigabyte SSD drive. This is a cable miters, a SATA cable connection or SATA um, connection dock. This makes formatting that hard drive. Uh, if you want to check out multiple builds later, insert here, plug this into your PC or uh, Mac, whatever you're using, and we'll, uh, that will be able to easily format or load or burn the uh, operating system ISO image on the drive. A couple of extras here. Um, this is actually my lab that I've got on, so don't worry about it. Uh, this is the, I shouldn't say this is an extra, you'll need this for the tutorial. This is a Trezor wallet. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start this wallet up for you, but what I wanna caution you all is not to do uh, the things that I'm going to do just for this tutorial, which is share the seeds for this wallet uh, with anybody or even store them online, store them offline uh, on paper and ideally in a safety deposit box of some sort, um, or at the very least a fireproof safe, something, something to where um, it won't be online. But I'm gonna show this, how to do it with you, but don't share any of the information that I'm going to share with you. I'm just showing you how to set it up. It's about $50 right now, $50 to $100 on Amazon, depending on what deal you can get. I highly recommend connecting your rig by a LAN cable, uh, Cat6 wire, um, to your modem or router, whatever you've got going at your local um, infrastructure, if it's at home or office or whatever. Uh, anyway, find you know 25 foot or 100 foot one of these on Amazon um, for 20 bucks. Uh, if you decide to build a uh, eight GPU rack, you're gonna wanna buy a, a PSU splitter, power supply splitter. This will connect two power supplies in tandem and then connect onto a single port uh, on that Biostar uh, motherboard that we've got set up. Uh, some builds like the, um, the ASUS B250 um, and the, uh, yeah, that, that mining series will actually come configured with multiple motherboard uh, power supply connections. Uh, but uh, for this BioStar, you'll need a power supply splitter if you choose to get um, power up eight GPUs. So, um, uh, lastly, let's see what else we got here. Uh, these are the on-off switches. If you get the crypto case that I purchased, you'll get one of these. It's just an on-off switch that'll turn on and off the build. And then lastly, uh, let's see what we got here. That's a lens cap from the camera. <laughs> 
and uh, let's see, this is a kilowatt that'll measure exactly how much your build is pulling. That build right there that you see, it's a, a eight GPU rack. Uh, those are the Asus, Asus uh, 1080 GPUs, uh, which I wouldn't recommend, but uh, for the experimentation for this build, I think they pulled about 20 amps, and I just wanted to see exactly what fared better. Uh, the TI is right out of the box, are my personal favorites, they're also the most expensive. Out of the box, they'll yield about three, 33 megahertz per second uh, hash rate, which is great. Uh, out of the box, in some of these, you're really only gonna get 26 or 28, uh, but yeah, out of the box, without even overclocking them, 32 megahertz a second. They're also a pretty penny, I think it's around, I don't know, last time I checked, they were selling for a premium on eBay for about uh, $1,200, but I'm sure they've come down since because all the manufacturers from AMD and, and NVIDIA are all rolling out new cards. This is a kilowatt, again, this will tell you exactly how much power each rig is pulling. That one right there is about 20 amps. A lot of power. And lastly, I'm just doing this to be safe. Uh, I've got eight, I got 64 of those running down there and I wanted to test the air quality. This is an air quality uh, emissions tester. It'll tell you if there's any formaldehyde or any other chemicals that might be um, endangering your immediate air quality. That's a hundred bucks. You don't need it, but I'd recommend it um, just to have. And that is it. So what I'm gonna do now is take you off screen uh, I'm going to bring the camera around. You'll basically see my hands in sort of surgery mode, putting together one of these crypto cases. I'll chat, um, you know, here and there, but the first part of this, um, I'm going to not chat. Uh, it's going to be building that crypto case. And I'd set aside a couple hours, get a cup of coffee going. Um, and yeah, it's, it kind of feels like you're going to be uh, like uh, Cuba Gooding Jr. from Men of Honor uh, without any tools underwater for a little bit if you don't know kind of what's going on. But if you watch the video, you'll know what's going on. I, my first time that I went through this with the build, I was like, what the hell is going on here? I'm pretty good with IKEA furniture. Uh, why am I struggling putting this together? But uh, yeah, after the first time around, I knocked these out within, uh, I'd say 30 minutes flat. So anyway, don't be embarrassed or ashamed if you uh, just took a little bit of time assembling that first uh, I just spit everywhere. All right, folks, just like I said, let's get started. You're gonna see my hands only. Can't wait to get you on my table here, Dexter style. Let's go ahead and start with the unboxing of the crypto case. I took a box cutter and cut these loose, these straps. And I'm going to open these up. Okay, there's really nothing fancy here. I'm just gonna go ahead and open it up. Rampage style here. Alrighty. Boom. That's everything, okay. All right, so. Let's go ahead and open this. These things you want to put off to the side for the power supply units. Let's put those to the side. Don't lose these parts. They're easy to lose. These are for the fan. I might go ahead and also uh, go through the... Uh, these aren't the fan blades. These are them. These are the fan blade guards. I might go ahead and uh, install some fans with this too. I didn't think they were necessary, but I'm just going to go ahead and do it for the sake of exercise. I'll add it on to the gist as well, but uh, they're, I think they're uh, four or five Windmere fans that go on uh, these builds, but we'll go, we'll go over that later. 
Right now, it's just kit crypto case assembly. There are the instructions. Those are for the fan case as well. Set those to the side. More garbage. You'll need these parts. These are, this includes that on off switch I was talking about and the peanuts. There are the hex wrenches. to set this stuff kind of nice and neat to the right, to the right of me. Just set it off, make sure you have a clear table like this. I use uh, just a regular moving blanket, kind of helps you stay anti-static and uh, just in case you have any loose parts, it won't really dent or damage or anything. Uh, a couple extra tools you need, I just, like I said, a box cutter, a regular box cutter and a pair of needle nose. I think that also helps. Uh, they, hex wrenches come with the case. So set these tools to the side, maybe a cup of coffee, kind of get you through your uh, weekend day there, weekday, whatever you're doing. And we're gonna do it up here, and then we're gonna screw it up, literally. So there's the map, the instructions, pardon me, not the map. Um, tells you exactly what's going on here. Um, and if memory serves, we're just gonna go ahead and uh, Begin with setting again this to the side. We'll need the longest components first, these, and we'll set these to the left as well. We'll need these, but these are what we'll primarily start with. That's the perimeter. I'm gonna set the instructions off to the side. You can refer to them as you wish, but you'll be able to see me put this. Um, I'll move this to the side as well. You'll be able to watch and learn as I do it up with y'all and screw it up, hopefully the right way. So one of the first things is you'll refer to the diagram like that. I'm putting it this in front of me. So you're looking at that your way. I'm looking at this in front of me. Moving these parts to the side. So those align like that. And they are sort of aligned. They're not exactly aligned. Identically, so get this going there. Okay, good. Go to the left. And honestly, folks, what I might do here is just fast forward through this. You can refer to the instructions. I'm just kind of showing you what I do along alongside here. So I'll probably just end up doing that. I'll probably end up showing a fast footage and maybe talking over this. So enjoy.
All right, folks, I just uh, zoomed out a little bit just to say exactly how this is going to work. There is the back side of the case, as you can see here, with the, um, with the GPU rest. I'm going to turn it around. So this is how this will work. The fans that we've assembled and connected will slide over the back here. Like so will basically just slip in and then you will once again fasten those with the hex set this will go down I don't know if you can see one of these pieces will go down into the rail here and then you'll connect it with one of the uh, screws provided the hex screws so anyway uh, that'll be that and then I will show you or at least transition to the rest of the build that'll conclude the case assembly and now we'll begin um, actually uh, creating the build with the motherboard and the rest of the components that we've uh, outlined in the gist. So follow me in the next uh, transition. All right folks, we should be about finished now. Uh, you should have your case um, pretty much assembled. Uh, now we're going to begin the uh, motherboard install here. And um, what I'd like to do is go ahead and set this aside. Then I'm gonna bring out the motherboard. And as I said before, I've clarified in some of the tweets and releases that I'm going to do a uh, EVGA power supply, um, the G3s, because you can use them for both the um, six and eight builds. You can get away with doing the 1300 and the six, at least I have before, but I wouldn't recommend it. If you wanna do it the right way, the safe way would be to do two 1000 watt G3s for both six and eight builds. So anyway, this is what the motherboard looks like. It's, that was the first one I got started with. Um, let's just go ahead and start with the mount. So that's the motherboard. I'm gonna set this aside back onto the wrap. And then I'm gonna turn this around so everyone can see it. I'm gonna see if I can maybe do this sideways. But um, let's see, best way to do this. Uh, okay, so you'll see some holes alongside each of the, uh, the mounts. And what this will look like, you've got the power supplies there should look something like this. The power, this will sit something like this. And you'll want to align the mounts. There are these mount screws that are, that are packaged with the um, GPU, I'm sorry, the, the crypto case kit. And they look something like this, like goldish copper color. So we're gonna try and align each one of these with the holes in the motherboard like so. So the best place to start would be the back here. And maybe see if, okay, if that's gonna fit there on the 13, I think it's gonna be right there. So each will sit there. So it'll be on the second screw on the far right here. We'll go ahead and mount that in. And then you can see that will sort of flush on there like that. And then you can sort of see the other holes that it might align with. So it looks like the first two in the front there work okay. So let's do that. Okay. Should be sure it's just fine. Okay. Yes, so it's looking good so far. And it looks like we've got the last three in the back here will be the ones that mount on. Let me just take a look one more time to make sure. Actually, this one right here, second to last one. And you wanna eyeball it. I mean, these are pretty durable, these are motherboards, but don't go around, you know, fanning yourself with it or slapping people with it. But they're pretty durable. I mean, I could hold it like this and maybe bang it against the case here and it should be okay, but like I said, I wouldn't be gentle with it. Or try to be. Okay. 
Okay, it's looking pretty good. No line here. Now again, this might be blocked for conventional setups, but we're just doing mining with this. We're really not looking to get too fancy here. So anyway, it looks like we're pretty good then. All right, so they're, they're sitting on top there. Now I'm gonna take these screws. And flush into those mounted brackets. And screw them in with the hex tool. So here's one, let's begin on the edge. but it's working. That one I didn't think it screwed in too nicely. I don't think I got it just straight in there like that. I don't think I screwed the mount in. That's one thing I gotta be careful with. Is <laughs> making sure that screws in there. Let's see what I did was I. do is I, I didn't say and grab that in tightly I'm gonna see if I can unscrew it like that if you weren't an idiot like I was you probably would have screwed it in real easy but now I'm just all I'm trying to do is unscrew this that was my fault so unscrew this then I'm gonna try and re-unscrew that See, I didn't make sure you flush those in nicely. Sometimes they'll won't catch any of the grooves. There we go. Like I said, it might be nice to have a good set of needle nose next to you so you can make sure you get it in there. Should be nice now. Okay, let's try that again. There we go. Nice and easy. All right.
I see that one got in a little trouble again. Let's try it again. You do your best when trying to screw these in, but don't try to, don't force it in. Just kind of make sure they've, they're firm, but not, don't break, don't try to snap it in there shut, because then it, or crowds it in a crack, because then you're in trouble. See, I got that one in there wrong. Did the same thing. If that happens, just grab your needle nose set, grip it, and then unscrew it and try it again. Do the best you can with it. And if not, you know, if that doesn't sit there on there nicely, then you can always try it again some other time. What I'm doing is I'm trying to screw that back in there tighter underneath. So that happens if you don't screw it in all the way. So I take that needle nose and just make sure you tighten as much as you can before you Try to screw in those other those hex brackets in. All right, let's see. Let's see if this will work. And you can skip a bracket. I mean, if this one won't work with us, then we can skip it. It's not gonna not gonna hurt anything. Try that one more time. And the final one. All right. All right, so that's fastened on there. Next easy thing to do would be just be to um, do the, let's do the processor next. So you flip this up. Because we can see, pull that trigger away. I'm gonna pull this up, leave that plastic cover on, and then we're gonna pull out the Pentium chip. This will come with a cooling fan and the chip, the Pentium chip by Intel. And so what we do here is pull out the chip of the case, just pull that out of the case, and then it's going to sit like so. And there'll be gr like guiding grooves in here, but it'll look like that. It'll sit like this, it's facing you like that, and it should sit right in there like so, or it could be the other way, pardon me. There we go, that's it. So the grooves, will, you'll see some small grooves that are there and that'll fit in there nicely. Then we take the cover guard, situate it like this, close it, put the trigger down, it'll kind of, it'll be some pressure and you pull out, comes off nicely. Next thing would be, Take the heat sink gel and dab a little bit on there. I'm just gonna dab a little bit, just a little bit. A little dab will do you. Test it out first. There we go. Who's out of there? 
put a little bit on there like that. Sometimes it'll come like a little spatula, but you just need to put enough on there to kind of insulate it from the fan cover that we're going to put on there. Here comes the fan. Pull the fan off. It'll come sort of situated. Unbundle it. And then it'll face the direction Intel will face the um, will face the camera here away from you. If you're going to do it this way, if not, I got some heat sink on my hand already. Bear with me. So there we go. Fasten that on there like that. And I'll kind of push in there. You'll see some grooves that'll just push. And they'll, they'll be an indicator or a signifier. There should be one. And they'll kind of just snap on there. It should be on there. It should be fastened pretty good. Like that, it's locked on there. Then we take the GPU fan input, the wires. There'll be, a, there'll be an indication here on this motherboard. It says CPU fan. Plug that in there with the grooves guided. There's a, some, there's a groove. Again, push that on there like this. Just glide it on there. Should go in nice and easy. And there it is, boom. So we've mounted the fan. The CPU fan is now ready to go. That is a central processor unit. We're gonna take the RAM stick. If you've got two of them, uh, you'll put two. Um, one is enough, but this is just how you do it. Mount it on there, like so. Pull that off. It should fit in nicely. It'll clip in, boom. If you got a second stick, go ahead and mount that on there. I'm gonna go ahead and see if I got one. I do, I'm just gonna do it for the sake of exercise. Go ahead and do that with you. Boom. Oop, wrong direction, pardon me. There we go. So, the next thing that we're gonna do here um, is we'll begin mounting the, uh, the PSU. Since we're gonna do two with y'all, I'm gonna do two of them with you, I'm gonna go ahead and get the, uh, the mount or the, uh, the splitter ready to go. So here's the splitter. Mount this in like this, like so. That. And then there'll be another piece of this. So like this, this piece connects like so, I believe. There should be something that's indicating a motherboard side. Yeah, so these are, the, th the female ends will plug into the PSUs. The male end will stick into the motherboard. Like so, and again, those are the splitter like this. They got the same part I did. It'll connect, like there's a groove again. Like that fastens on there, and then you plug in, and it should snap on there. Pretty easy. Uh, the option again on this uh, on the fan, the fan ports, this should connect one of them, should connect later. We'll, we'll plug in on this side because it's got the longest wire. That'll go into where it says fan. Um, and you might daisy chain this. What I'm going to use is a daisy chain. So this should connect like so into the fan unit. I'm gonna connect the daisy chain into the seat. It says, say cha fan over here. I'm gonna connect that into the cha fan port. And the daisy chain will connect to the first available um, fan, and that's right here. And then you'll loop them to other daisy chains. Again, 
I would qualify this as optional, but let's just go ahead and leave it as is for right now. Um, that's connecting there. Let's see. Let's do it in order. The first one's here. And the second one will be here. And then you'll connect another daisy chain. There should be at least one more. I'll grab a few of them. This like this, and they'll, they'll kind of groove in. You'll see it again. This is optional. I wouldn't. I actually almost wouldn't even. I'd skip it if I. But it's just I'm doing this for the sake of exercise. You don't have to do this. Then you connect the other daisy chain like this. That goes into one. So you see, the idea is to connect them. I. I mean, honestly, it's not even really even worth the hassle. I don't know. I. I think it's you know sort of a negligible return. Or marginal return on this, but uh, let's see. This goes here, I think. So the idea is you're, you're daisy chaining them. They're all kind of connected here. So boom. So this connects here, the first one. To the second one, this second daisy chain connects to the second daisy chain. There's the third one here that's connected. So they're all looped in and ready to go. That's the daisy chain setup. Uh, next, we're gonna do the PSU. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how that works. Bear with me a second. All right, folks, now we're gonna install the power supplies. I'm gonna flip this around or at least put this over here the crypto case over here now to kind of unbox the power supply with y'all these are the two evga 1000 watt g3s so that's the power supply they're modular which is great let's throw these away here then we'll take out all the cords and set these aside. Set these aside. Make sure they're kind of in the box. Make things keep them neat, nice and neat. Um, so, this will go on the, if we're gonna put this here, I'm gonna flip it around for my own ease if I can do this in reverse I'm not sure if I can or not though let's see but this will basically be like this and the other one will sit right next to it I'll pull that out Let's go ahead and mount these in. So if everyone can see what I'm doing here, then you'll have those screws that'll again come with the box. They should at least. Should be at least four of them. 
You'll need a screwdriver. over. scoot these over I think with the hex Let's see you should be able to <clears throat> this one might fit like that I kind of just want to see if you can have these fit any way you can I may have flipped that around wrong So the power supplies. See if we can screw these in here like so. They don't have to be exactly flush just so that they're down. If you were to move them or you know pick up the case, move it across the room, it'll stabilize. So just like so. Sorry if my brain, my uh, veins are breaking the camera. Lens. Sorry about that. Ready for the? Um, let's do the. Let's let's connect. Let's start connecting the uh, power here. So grab the power cables.
Okay. Got the power squid. I'm not going to connect the power yet, but just go ahead and connect the power cords so you'll be ready to go and plugged in when the time is right. Okay, so now that's the power. Now we're going to flip this around. When it's ready to go, I'm just gonna pull it out, but I'm gonna plug those back in when we're ready to turn everything on. So let's flip this around so everyone can see what's going on. Now let's see if everyone can see here. Maybe not, maybe I'll have to. Maybe we'll have to resituate the camera. All right, so. Um, let's see that. All right, folks, just a quick interlude here. I would like to, I guess, in detail, demonstrate exactly how these uh, power ports or cords go in from the PSU to the uh, motherboard. So the first one I started out with, I believe was the CPU, the CPU power port. Uh, the CPU, this side, with the split sides, these split sides go into the motherboard, and then the solid side goes into the, uh, the uh, PSU. But, so we'll start there. Um, and let me see if I can find that. It should, there should be two ports, at least two, CPU one and CPU two. I'm plugging that into CPU one. And there we go, CPU, so that's plugged in. CPU, split sides go into the motherboard, they plug into that CPU um, designated CPU spot as I, as I demonstrated on the motherboard, it snaps right in there. Um, the next section, other power cord I wanted to go over was the motherboard power connection. Um, the split sides, now this is a different side, the split sides go into the mother, I'm sorry, the, the PSU side power supply side, the split ends go in that way, and the solid port goes into the motherboard, or one of those PSU splitters. Um, that's where that goes. One of the PSU splitters connects directly in there. If you're doing one 1300, I wouldn't recommend it. I mean, I, I've done it before, and I'm doing it on one of the builds that I've got over here. Um, I wouldn't advise it, it's not best practice, but you can get away with it for smaller units. Um, I haven't seen anything go wrong yet, but again, to do this right, or at least to make for the sake of ease, I would say two um, G3 1000 EVGA PSUs. So that's that. Uh, one other PSU port we're going to go over is the SATA connection. SATA connection goes into the SATA port. And I'm just going to unplug these for the sake of demonstration here. This SATA connection to SATA. And you can see this is one that's kind of has those flat ends. This SATA connection, solid state, SATA will go into SATA. SATA 1, boom. Order doesn't matter, but I would stay consistent. I would start with SATA 1, SATA 2, SATA 3. I would go in accordingly just to stay sort of logical and methodical. Uh, then the, the perifs, the perif goes into the motherboard section as well. Those are those two, you might have a two um, perif splitter or four, but anyway. And this um, ASRock H110 BTC, we're going to use two of them only, and one of them goes into um, one section of the motherboard and the other goes in the other. I clarify this within the uh, other in the video of the split, but I'm just, again, taking a quick interlude to show you exactly how things plug in. Uh, it's really pretty easy. So the perif is over here on this back side. This perif one is right over here, right next to CPU, plugging that in like so. So you can see that, again, same sort of thing. And of course, the power, eventually when you're finished connecting everything, you would plug the power cord into the back here, and boom, and then, that, then you would turn that um, on-off switch on, as it were. If you've got two of these, like I've said, as I demonstrated before, make sure both of those on, 
then plug these into a power squid or power strip and then turn that on last so it's primed okay and that concludes that should be pretty straightforward um, i will try to open up forums on youtube when i post this so if you have any questions please don't feel free or feel free to shout out and ask away i'll do my best to get to get to those questions all right folks uh those are the two psus there and we're connecting that gpu that pcie card into the motherboard um, and again these power supplies are powering everything so those power supplies as you can see there they're also powering the motherboard uh, with those perif cables and cpu cable um, this 30 seconds right here or next uh, 45 seconds is just a, a quick and dirty run of what's to come after this video uh, after this segment um, it will be the next 30 seconds me fast forwarding through um, the remaining part of this video um, and i will in detail um, explain what's going on in, in a much slower pace one thing i would recommend if this is your first build and you don't know what's going on with those um, crypto case fans i would skip them you could risk burnout um, on the motherboard um, i tried to explain this but again it's one of those things that could complicate things and that aren't necessary on your first run and i'm happy to answer these questions um, on the youtube channel board so again um, hopefully this helps but if not um, feel free to ask away on the youtube chat okay so then we're going to connect the um, power supplies to the power supply splitters a splitter so I'll try and get these out of the way these fan daisy chain so essentially this will happen is one will connect to one power supply and another to a the other power supply so the it'll say MB on it that MB will go to the motherboard power splitter end so we're going to plug one of these in it should snap right in should got groove right in it'll be a direction like that so try that again it'll fit just like so should at least right in come on now I uh, lied oh, that area okay that's there okay why isn't that Oh, pardon me, that is the motherboard end. It, this is the motherboard end, pardon me. It'll be the flushed and that goes in. There we go. And this will go into the back here. You can see on the other camera. go boom 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 okay that's one and then the other one will go in the other again that's the hard side okay as you can see in the other camera here on the osmo Next is what we have. I'm gonna connect the CPU fan. Pick one power supply. I'm gonna choose CPU of this side. Doesn't matter which side. It's gonna plug in the CPU fan. 
and then the split side will be the motherboard side. So I'm plugging that in there, if you can see it on my other camera. And this will go right in the CPU slot over here. Should guide nicely in there. side this is a uh, this is a perif cable Perif cable helps power the motherboard. There'll be a perif label on the motherboard side. Try to pick the same side that you picked the CPU fan, just to stay consistent. So that goes there in the perif. You can see any Osmo there. And then there are two perif ports here on this motherboard. So I'm gonna connect one here. Doesn't matter which one really. is connected and now we will begin um, let me see here what we do next um, let's start connecting the first um, the first uh, the first uh, GPU. So I'm going to plug the first GPU, the first VGA power. I'm going to pick, I'm going to start with the other side. It doesn't really matter. But again, I'm going to start there just so we have one. And I'm going to split them up just because it's better to split the power up. One thing to note is that you want to have no more than two SATA cables. Don't power more than two GPUs per one SATA connection. That is not standard rule of thumb. It can actually overload one of the power supplies. So uh, plug a SATA cable in there. There's one SATA. So this will power two. That'll power four, three and four. So if we have, just try to maintain the same amount of GPU. So if we do um, four GPUs over here, then two over here, just make sure you sort of match the SATA cables with the um, VGA or the PCIe cables, uh, the, the, um, the power, the VGA power connections to the GPUs. So you've got that. So 
So here is I'm going to scoot this back now. Or forward, I guess, pardon me. So I don't know if you can see, but this is the GPU, and it's going to rest on one of those mounts. So I've already sort of leveled this off, and that'll sit there. Let's start with the middle so everyone can see. Uh, so here, I'm going to screw that in with the hex and the um, screws here. So there's one, whoops. There's one. Be careful you don't try to s drop one of these because it could fall on that exhaust the GPU, you don't want to, the power supply, so you don't want to do that. So it'll just screw right in there, so. So you can see it's fastened right on there. Screwing right in there, okay. All right, so one of those power connections, right? The, one of the VGAs we just uh, plugged into the motherboard, it will, one connection right here, so there's, there's one port in this, in this specific model, only one of those will go in there. If you, I'm gonna pull out another GPU just in case you decide to level up when one of the runs I recommended. Some of them could come up to eight, and there could be adapters for these. Um, but for the power supplies I recommend you should have more than enough. So like in this case, I just plug one four in there. Like, so I combine it. I combine the GPU. I'm going to flip it around so everyone can see. Everyone can see here. We won't be able to see. Maybe if I. I'll try the other way around. I'll try this. Okay, folks, one more quick interlude here um, and plugging the VGAs, you're getting the VGAs situated or powered up once you have them rigged up um, on the minor rig. So um, I've recommended starting out with the XFX RX 580s. Uh, fairly straightforward here. Um, there is a VGA cable, right? The VGA cable or, um, basically will power up the uh, uh, the, the uh, GPU like so. Now this is a pretty basic one, very easy, um, not very complicated. Take one of the VGA cords, you can see, and connect them, like so that they're gonna be split, so you'll have options. Um, and connect it like so, it's split up like that into three. It's actually a two by four, but it looks like one uh, two by three and one one by one. Stick it like there, or was there one by two? Stick it out like there, connect it, and you're gonna connect this into the GPU VGA power slot. If I can get it to connect.
see it takes a little bit of coordination and touch here. There we go. And that's connected. So that's pretty easy. After that, we take the PCIe Express card, the risers, and we connect them. That'll come, I think they'll come unattached, but anyway, unattach it like so. So it's primed to plug into the GPU card section. Plug it in, slides on there, flushes in there, then click that white button, slide it in so it's snug on there, and you're good to go. Then this, um, the PCIe card will be powered by one SATA connection. Pretend this is sort of um, sitting on a GPU. Uh, I'm sorry, on the, on the crypto rack. You plug that in to the ASADA cable connection port and the female end into the male end, like so. Let's see if I can do this. You get the idea, I and mean, then that connects, like so, and boom. There you have it, so that's that. Um, that connects in, and then you plug the GPU cable into the motherboard into that PCU, PCIe card, you'll see in the next uh, demonstration, there's that. Uh, if you leveled up to one of the RX 580 Nitros, which are my personal favorite, the Sapphire Editions, um, you would split these up. So this VGA power would go into the four connection like we did before, right? I'm gonna connect that in there like so. And then, let's see if I've got the touch again. go connects like so and then you connect that excess VGA power into that th two by three section of the RX 580s uh, like that so it's plugged in on both uh, make sure that if you have um, you know an RX 580 like this where the um, ports are more than two by four or in this case I guess collectively would that be uh, two by seven is that's right yeah two by I'm oh, sorry two by six pardon me um, two by six all right I guess that is two by seven right or three, yeah, two by seven, that's right. Uh, make sure they're all plugged in. So it's plugged in, has sufficient power. Uh, you get the idea, and again, feel free to ask any questions if you have any on the YouTube message board. Uh, that concludes that. All right, folks, build complete. I'm gonna go ahead and discuss exactly what's going on here with the Osmo. I'll overlay my voice right now, but anyway, if you take a look at the back here, um, I've got the uh, power switch, on-off switch, um, plugged into the on-off, I'm sorry, the blades that are within the motherboard. There's a power PWR section, um, and I'm gonna pan in with the Osmo here. Just take a look here. That's one thing to know, and all you do is press this on-off button like I did. Uh, I'm going to flip it around here, um, and show you the hard drive. It's also connected to a SATA cable and a SATA dock cable. It's also connected into the, um, into the motherboard here, as you can see. So anyway, now that we have the build complete, um, we will go ahead and um, talk about the install. That'll be part two of the series, and I appreciate you um, saddling up with me. Thank you. Okay, folks, that concludes the part one of this series, a three-part series. If it turns on, it turns on, great, good for you. Um, I'm real proud of you, because <laughs> that means I did my job here in uh, teaching you how to do this. So, congrats on that. Um, you have it turned on, but now you need the software, you need the BIOS configuration. That's gonna be in part two. And we're also gonna learn how to overclock them. Right out of the gate, these are, looks like, cranking out about 140 megahertz a second with ETHOS. Um, that's what I'm going to recommend getting everybody started on. Then we're going to try to overclock these um, in Windows. Uh, that'll require a Windows um, 
um, purchase of a Windows edition, but to get going, uh, you can be just fine with ETHOS, and that's probably the easiest way to get started. But we're gonna walk all the way through this in part two, and then I'll probably do some sort of a breakdown of it all in part three, maybe talk about um, spinning up your own node um, in Windows or something like that. But it'll be a three-part series. First part will be getting the rig um, assembled um, like we have here and go from there. Again, please feel free to ask any questions on the YouTube uh, chat board. Again, I'm Alex Singleton, CEO, CTO, and founder of Bucephalus Dev, and thank you for watching.